Thank you so much for deciding to paint with me today. We are going to have so much fun painting this awesome wool. I hope you'll enjoy it. At the beginning of this video, I made the decision to not show how to transfer the image because there are a lot of people using watercolors and oils. I, today, am going to be using acrylics. So because there's different methods and different mediums, some are going to be painting on woods, other on canvas, some on paper, I decided to just let you figure it out. There are a ton of YouTube videos that are going to explain on how to transfer the image right onto the canvas that you're working with. So go ahead and Google that for a minute. Take a second. And if you want to be brave, which I totally recommend, it would be totally awesome if you just freehanded it, just to give yourself an added little bit of practice of drawing. But if you're not a confident drawer, go ahead and just transfer the image. Feel free to go ahead and go on my website and print the image. It is yours to keep. Thank you so much for deciding to paint with me today. We are going to have so much fun painting this awesome wool. I hope you'll enjoy it. At the beginning of this video, I made the decision to not show how to transfer the image because there are a lot of people using watercolors and oils. I, today, am going to be using acrylics. So because there's different methods and different mediums, some are going to be painting on woods, other on canvas, some on paper, I decided to just let you figure it out. There are a ton of YouTube videos that are going to explain on how to transfer the image right onto the canvas that you're working with. So go ahead and Google that for a minute. Take a second. And if you want to be brave, which I totally recommend, it would be totally awesome if you just freehanded it, just to give yourself an added little bit of practice of drawing. But if you're not a confident drawer, go ahead and just transfer the image. Feel free to go ahead and go on my website and print the image. It is yours to keep. The first thing that we're going to do is add some black onto our palette. Just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot. Black goes a long way. These are the two brushes I'm going to be using today. I have a tiny little itty bitty one and then I have a medium sized one that is, has a flat edge. See how it's skinny and it's flat? If you want to use a round brush that's like this but bigger, go ahead. Use that. Whatever you have on hand. I'm going to go into the black and first I'm making a decision that I would like to do the background. I feel that when you overlap paint, it's kind of a better idea to show 3D. So I'm going to go ahead right here and just really quickly have a good time and just paint the edges without really stressing a whole lot of everything. This is kind of like having a little bit of a warm up before the before the, uh, the exercise. I am using a stretched canvas over a wood board. This is what I prefer to paint with. If you do not have this, uh, it's fine. You can use a board, you can use paper, whatever it is that you have on hand. This is just my favorite type of painting surface. Um, I do prefer to just buy them already pre-stretched over the frame. I find that the cost if, is pretty much eat apples and oranges compared to if I do it and stretch the fabric over the frame or if I just buy them pre-stretched. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do all the edges. And feel free to put the colors that you want. If you don't want your background to be black, don't use black. Use whatever color you, you would like. I am choosing to do my uh, background black because I think that it's going to really give it a nighttime kind of a look. And then also because black absorbs all the colors, it just, it really is going to make all the other colors of the wolf stand out really nicely. And I'm sure by now that you've noticed that I already have it pre-sketched out onto the canvas. I have a couple of videos on my website that talk about sketching and ideas about drawing and different things. So please check those out um, and get, give it it'll give you a lot more detail. I chose not to add this into the video today, otherwise it's, it's gonna take forever to do this painting, and I didn't want this video to be like a six hour video. Um, also, if, uh, if you want to, you can um, go to YouTube, and there's a lot of tutorials on how to transfer images. Now you can freehand uh, images, like you can, there's so many different ways. You can use a projector, 
uh, which is a method of choice that I really like to use. I talk about that and I have a video about how to do that. And then also you can use transfer paper, which is fun. Uh, that's an easier, cheaper method to go about doing it. Uh, let's see, you can do the grid method where you make a big old square grid on your canvas and then you go block by block and you draw in with the lines. So go ahead and do whichever way is comfortable for you that you're happy with. I want this, this to be your, your painting, your design, your handiwork. I want your painting to be awesome and cool. But I also want to be able to see that it's yours, that you painted it, and it's got your unique signature on the, the painting. I always find that that's pretty cool, because we're going to have a lot of different students painting this painting, and everybody's is going to look slightly different based on how good of a painter they are, and also what they choose to tell in their story that they're painting. Everybody's going to tell a slightly different story, and it's going to be so totally cool. Um, everybody, I have a lot of uh, students that post them on my social media page so you can see what everybody's doing. If you would like to, I would love to see your version of this painting and how you paint it. I'm totally into that and I really want to see. Um, so go ahead and send me an email. I mean, you don't have to show me if you don't want to. But if you would like to, I'd love to see it. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I do have a Facebook group called Painting Challenge that's connected to, you can see, the on my website I have a link to the Facebook page and the Facebook page has the group connected to it and that's where a lot of my students paint a lot of their work to show off and to be like, hey look how cool and all that, so go check it out. I put a lot of information up there all day, uh, excuse me, every day I post something cool that's like art related and on topic and you might find some interesting uh, things. Ooh, I don't know if I should paint this or not. I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And go ahead and use whatever colors you want to. I know I said that earlier, but I strongly mean it. I'm going to show you where I'm choosing to put the colors and where I think it would be really cool to put the colors. Uh, but work with what you got. If you want to do like um, a purpley palette of different like monochromatic different shades of purple that would be totally cool um, I would recommend picking colors that are unique to your house and like where it's gonna hang and if you're gonna give it to somebody like the colors that are their favorite colors and then trying to stay on that color scheme but this color this the colors I'm gonna use today I think they all look, look pretty cool together I'm gonna go ahead and turn my canvas now when I paint one of the things that I'm really into, that I really enjoy doing, is turning the canvas quite often. I find that when I do that, I have a better time at looking at things, and I see it from a different angle, and I'm like, I find all my boo-boos when I do that. And so it really helps me a lot. And then also, I'm when I paint, I prefer to move the brush in certain patterns, and if I turn the canvas, it'll help me get those edges and those marks the way I want them to be versus me having to be very weird with my hand and make it all awkward. I am choosing to stay like where the lines are. Um, I'm not going way too far into where I don't want the black because if I do that, it's going to be really, really hard later. to. I, I'm going to have to use many, many layers to go over the black. I am using acrylic paint. And this is um, not the expensive stuff, and it's not the cheap stuff. It's like right in the middle. So basically what that means is there's water in this paint, but it's not a whole lot of water. It's still kind of a thick-bodied paint. And so um, it's just that the black is really powerful. So if I'm going to go with, like, yellows or any colors next to it, it's, it's like underneath, and then I want to go with a light hue on top of the black, you're really going to see the black stand out and it's really going to dull the color and it's it's a whole thing. So just, I would recommend to stay, to go to the lines, but just, you know, be very careful that you're kind of just not like painting everywhere, right? That you're just painting where you want that black to be. Now when you are painting lighter colors, such as like a light pink, yeah, you could, I could have just gone everywhere and then gone over it with a darker hue. Then that would have been way easier. 
like to be able to cover up that pink. Like right here, I'm not really that happy with how my fur ended up. I'm gonna try to fix it later, but it's going to be, over here I'm happy with this lines, so they're pretty cool, but over here I'm gonna have to add a couple extra layers to really get that fur to be the way that I want it to be. Um, now normally, I'm sure you've taken my other classes, I prefer to do fur with a fan brush. I feel that fan brushes tend to really just sell the point across that it's fur, and I just think it looks really great. Now the thing with this one is this is modern art. I'm on purpose trying to make this painting not look like a photograph. I don't want this to look like it came out of the computer, the computer that it was like um, a, a digital image. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush. And so because of that I'm just going to kind of have at it. And it's going to be a whole bunch of happy accidences. The happy accidences are where this painting is just going to be amazingly awesomely super cool so I'm gonna stick to the dark tones just because why not uh, usually it's better to always paint with light tones first and then go into dark tones I'm gonna move this little guy out of the way for a minute um, and then you go into the light tones and then later you come back in to add darker tones that helps with the overlapping of what I was talking about earlier so that way you can get crisper lines now if you noticed I added a uh, blue I think I actually kind of put a lot of blue. I didn't, don't think I'm going to need that much. I'm going to go ahead and really make sure you wash out that brush because dark is a very dominant color. And then do you see how I'm bending it out onto my paper towel? Just slightly. I don't have to like kill my brush or anything. This uh, tip that I'm using right now is nylon. Um, I kind of prefer natural fibers over uh, synthetic fibers but really it's all in preference I just happen to like this one so I'm working with it so let's go ahead and work with some blue in different little areas I'm gonna do some blue up here with the nose and I'm gonna kind of try to keep those little triangles of fur happening I'm gonna stick with my drawing, but I'm still going to kind of let it happen. I'm not going to be super strict with my drawing. Now, you don't have to pre-draw this if you don't want to. Uh, there are many times and ideas that I do not paint uh, pre-draw my canvases. Um, I just felt like for this one, why not? Uh, this looking really pretty. I like it. I decided to, to pre-draw this one, but if you don't want it, don't do it. I do find it easier though because of letting us know is a road map. That's basically the only reason that I pre-draw stuff is to have like a road map. And do you see how those lines are just starting to kind of happen within the paint? Do you see a bunch of different little like just lines? It's not picking up super well on the canvas, uh, on the camera, but trust me, they're there. I see them, and they look great. I'm going to go ahead and do some blue here, just because, why not? I'm kind of, in a way, I'm sort of a little bit just making it up. A little bit here, a little bit there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, work back and forth on the canvas. So if one area is wet, like it is here, I'm going to kind of stay away from that a little bit and then I'm going to come back over and do something over here for a minute. I'm going to make sure as I have the color on my brush that I'm going to come around the edges just to save me for future work for it being a big old headache for later. I decided today to paint outside because it's such a lovely day today. And I have a beautiful garden in my backyard. There is a highway that is kind of close. Not really. I mean, it's, it's out there. So I'm sure you can hear a car here and there. But it's quite far. It's, it's a little bit windy today. I made a choice to come out here and paint. Because yesterday, my hair dryer kaputted. And so I was, I was kind of sad. It was like my toy died. I was a little upset about it. I really liked that hair dryer, but it wasn't really that good of a brand. It didn't last that long. 
Um, so I am painting in a little bit of wind and that wind is really going to help the paint dry a lot faster, which is kind of what I'm going for. And then doesn't the fountain sound beautiful? It's a very, it's a very beautiful little pond that I have that's right next to where I'm painting. It's just so nice to get outside for a little bit. I'm super enjoying it. I just have a bunch of birdies all over. There's a lot of trees here. I'm just totally enjoying the birdies. I'm going to paint over here just a little bit. I'm just swooshing and swooshing. This is a very easy painting, so I don't want you to get in your head that you're all stressed out. I don't want you to be like, I can't do this, because yes, yes, you can do this. It's going to be awesome. If you get some boo-boos, that's going to be even awesomer, because then it's like, I meant to do that. And uh, yeah, them boo-boos are really what's going to make this painting awesome. So don't get stressed out. If you do at any time get stressed out, go ahead and take a break. I might take a break, I'm not sure, it depends how I feel. Breaks really help me out a lot as an artist, especially to come back and to see it from a new perspective. So if it takes you several uh, times to paint this, go for it. The only rule that you should keep, I think, with yourself is make sure if you're going to do it, do it. Don't just halfway paint the painting. I've seen many students of mine that have, okay, I'm going to devote an hour, and then they like the next time I see them for another class they're starting on a whole new painting and I'm like wait a minute what weren't we gonna finish the other one which is also could be stress related too. that sometimes you get to a point in a piece where you're just like I can't anymore and that happens to me too I like currently right now I was in the process of doing a mermaid and I just kind of I needed a break from the mermaid I just wasn't feeling it anymore but really, try to really challenge yourself and really see if you can paint this and have this because this is going to look super cool on your wall. Everybody's going to think that you are like the coolest of the cool. So they're not going to do that if you don't finish the painting. I mean, I'm already loving what I see. I'm already super, super happy with this. Notice how when I have a little area that I'm working with, like a bunch, uh, that I'm mixing it around and going to different spaces and also I'm not you can if you want paint where you're going like this in this direction but what I'm choosing to do is go sideways and paint sideways and make those little marks and I'm making sure that I go over it but I don't go over it too much because I personally for my style and how I like to do it is I like to have those brush strokes in there in those lines. I've noticed that when I sell my art in galleries and different places that people really enjoy that. They want to see those little lines. They want to see your voice in the painting. So let that happen a little bit. But if that's not your style then the other method would just be go over it and go over it and go over it many times so that way that the paint those little lines just kind of disappear now when I do paint realism uh, which is like paintings that look more like they came from a photograph then yeah like I will um I will go over it a whole bunch of times a million times so that way I cannot have those little marks because that's not really what I want but this is modern modern style painting. So with modern style painting, you can do whatever makes you happy. And if they don't like it, whatever. There's so many people in the past that have not liked my paintings and it's like, okay, I didn't paint it for you. I painted it for me. Painting should be something that gives you joy and peace. I know it does me. I have a lot of joy and peace. If I have a really icky day, or it's just not working out, I come and paint, and everything is all good. It's almost like therapy. It really is. It's therapy for me. Instead of going, I'm feeling like I want to add some more blue here. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. But like, so here's my theory. You could go and pay a therapist. You could go and 
talk somebody's ear off and somebody that really doesn't care, but they'll pretend they care for a minute. But if you create something, if you write a song, if you dance, if you clean your closet, wash the dishes, you do something in which you don't have to put a lot of brain power to and you just let it happen and just let it be what it is, it's so fulfilling and rewarding. It, it just later you're like, ah, oh, the world is the peace. I am okay. And then sometimes, like I'm making this video and teaching you guys right now. So I'm, you know, I'm more focused on you guys and what's going on right now. But like if I am not, I'm going to wipe off some of this edge here. And the only reason I can do that is because the black has dried thoroughly. So since the black has dried thoroughly, I can wipe it and get some of that blue off. See how I made those lines? They're starting to really appear to be fur. That's what I'm going for. All those little lines, just going to make more and more fur. So if I'm not teaching a class and I'm just painting, there are times where I just go for what I, I just start painting and I start having a good time. And then I don't really think about anything particular. I just kind of let my mind wander a little bit. And then when my mind has wandered, I'll somehow come up with an idea. And I'll be like, well, wait a minute here. And it'll just hit me. And I'll be like, oh, that was the solution to the problem as to why I was so stressed out. And then there you go. And then everything is all good now. So if it helps, Go ahead and turn this volume off and just watch me, what I'm doing. And then just, you know, don't listen to me. And then just zone out. Honestly, zone out. And you're going to feel so good when you're done with this painting. And then you're going to have something so cool to go on the wall too. Um, but I, I want to talk to you. I'm hanging out. I'm having a good time. Let's see, what other color? I was thinking purple. Wouldn't purple be super cute? And then maybe like some pink. We could say she's a she <gasps> Oh, she's a she wolf. Do you remember that song? Yes, that is so the soundtrack to this painting. Oh, I think it was a she, uh, she wolf by Shakira. Mm, I love that song. That is totally the soundtrack. <gasps> that's great, that's awesome. Yep, this is my she wolf, she's coming out. Coming out, coming out, coming out. Oh, I don't know all the words, but like, if I'm quiet, I can hear it in my brain. I can hear her singing it. I really like Shakira. Okay, so I'm gonna go with purple. Look at that nice, beautiful contrast. That is beautiful. Now this blue is pretty dry, not all the way dry, but that's why I can do that crisp edge right there. If the blue is pretty, um, if the blue is, uh, like still kind of wet, then that crisp, beautiful edge isn't going to really be a thing. They'll kind of like blur together, which they're already both cool colors, so they're not going to change a whole lot. I do with this painting, I am trying to be on purpose that I'm not really mixing on the canvas at all. I want them to be very bright and true colors. I might later if I decide I don't like it, but so far I'm really liking what I see about just letting it be and letting it do its thing. It's hard to do that little edge with a sideways brush. Go back over and try to make them lines. Yes. Love it. Looks great. Okay, where else should we do? You know, we haven't been doing any of the ear. Let's do some ear for a minute. Uh, where do I want to do the ear? Oh, that's beautiful. I just love this shade of purple. I really do. I have noticed that when I use this color purple and um, I have paintings for sale, they tend to, these, this, this color sells really good. These two shades sell really good together. 
They're, those paintings tend to be easier to sell. I don't know if I'm going to sell this one. This one's a good one. So, like, here's my whole thing. I, because this is how I pay my bills, how I pay my mortgages by being an artist. So, I can't keep everything I make because then that just defeats the whole purpose of being a working artist. But every once in a while, there's that one painting that I'm really into, that just works, that makes sense, and I'm really thinking this is it. I think this is the one that's going to make the sense. This is my she-wolf coming out. It doesn't have to be a she-wolf, but yeah, she's a she-wolf. We need a name. <gasps> What name are we going to call our wolves? Oh. Hmm. Got to think about that one. I don't know. She'll tell me. We'll be painting. And just like how I heard the song in my brain, she's going to tell me what her name is. Okay, so we got some purple. I'm kind of feeling like a little bit of pink. So. I do not have pink because I ran out of it, so we're going to need to make some. I'm going to add the tiniest dot of red. kind of squirted a lot of paint out. I didn't need that much paint. And then I'm going to put white with it. And I'm going to mix. So, the more white you add to the red, the lighter that the shade of pink is going to become. If you add a lot of red to the white, it's going to be a darker shade of pink. So we'll just do something until it looks cool. How about that? Mixy, mixy, mixy. Well, that looks cool. I am going to go ahead and kind of mix thoroughly here, so that way I have a good solid color to put down because I don't want to be mixing on the canvas. And I would just have, I like to have a good solidy pink. Good, I'm liking it. I'm going to kind of see if I can wipe a little bit of that off. Okay, that works. Now where can we put some pink? Let's go for some frosted tips. I was totally thinking about it that I think I want to, my hair is brunette and I was really thinking about, sorry I was a little stressed out right there. Um, I'm really thinking about getting the tips purple to be silly because like I don't have to I don't I'm my own boss I really like that I don't have to uh, stress about out about the company dress code and like really honestly how many times in your life can you really just not have the dress code situation so that's cool and I figured it would kind of go cool with owning an art studio makes me look all artsy but it's exciting expensive, isn't it? I was checking around at prices and stuff and I was thinking like, yeah, $20. And I'm like, everybody in town charges like at least a hundred bucks. And it was, I wasn't, I never colored my hair before. So I just wasn't expecting it was like that. I'm kind of tomboy -y a little bit, but I totally want purple hair. Trying to really make this look like. Ta -da! I'm here and I'm fabulous. And I know you know I'm fabulous. Yep. I'm gonna wash my brush. I don't like how it's all caked on in there. We're gonna start again here with a nice, fresh, clean brush. I feel like when you have clean, fresh brushes, I feel like it just works better. and do a little bit of a highlight since this is a really light color because with the mouth I really want to show the mouth standing out and so if I have a, a light color underneath the mouth then the mouth is really going to make a statement that it's there I'm 
just really loving this piece. Doesn't the pond sound so beautiful? So soothing. some blue. <sighs> Does he stress or tone get that dry for a minute? I'll work. Go ahead and wash my brush. Let's see what other awesome, awesome cool colors can we put in here? How about we do some green? So I'm feeling like some yellow would go really good. You know what? Let's do yellow first so that way it has a chance to dry because we might have to put a double coat.
and cake it on there because we're going over the oh you know what don't cake it on there a little bit's okay I think I might come back and help these edges a little bit I might need to you know what I'm gonna go ahead just in this situation and use my smaller brush my little guy I'm gonna go ahead and do the edges I think I'm going to put it on and I'll come back with the black to uh, square it all up. But for right now, I'm just going to kind of get it on there. It's going to look hideous, but when I come back with the black and make it and fix it, the edges, it'll look a lot better. I kind of have to cake it on because it is a lighter hue. I can hear in the distance some kids playing in the background. One of the neighbor kids. Sounds like they're having a lot of fun. Such a nice spring day. I have a beautiful pond in front of me with a fountain and an azalea bush. It's blooming and it's huge. It's like, I would say about seven feet wide. It's a pretty big old bush right up next to the fountain. There's some koi fish that are in the pond. A lot of little decorations here and there to make it all look like a little gnome's house. And a little garden for the gnomes. It's all decorated. I recommend if you have the opportunity to paint outside. I find that it's the best light throughout my well I guess you'd say the last 15 years or so when I've been taking painting seriously I have tried all sorts of different lamps and in the end of the day I come to the conclusion that I like natural sunlight the best the problem with the natural sunlight is that you get it's hard to um, well it's the wind you know there's people, you're outside. I do have a lot of windows. I have two big, huge windows in my art studio inside the house, which is great for like when I'm painting in the winter time. Let me go ahead and get some green. Let's start with a little dark green and maybe a little, or you know what? Maybe we should stay with neon. Let's stay with some neon, see how that looks first. You know what? I feel like now that I look at it, I, I just have a little bit of yellow. Let's move some more yellow around. That way we can have a really good variety of mixture of color in many different places. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my canvas. I got a bug. There's a little bug on the canvas, little spider guy. How's that look? Yes, much better. I feel really good about that line. You know what? Let's do this. How about that? 
If you ever feel like you need to move your canvas, whenever, move it. If you, you're cool and you don't want to move your canvas, don't move it. It's all up to you and your preference and how you want to do it. Also, from time to time, I recommend standing up and walking away from your painting and seeing it from the distance. Maybe take a break, go to the bathroom, watch a TV show, talk to someone on the phone, go hang out, do something. Then come back and look at your painting. And then when you have that break from it and you revisit your painting, you're totally going to see immediately. As you, The first you see your painting, you'll be like, that's what it's missing. You'll find those boo-boos really quick. I do that quite frequently, actually, where I paint, and then maybe the next day, I'll be like, nope, and I'll have things that I'm like, yeah, we're going to change that. Oh no, oh, I got it in my hand. Oh well, we're gonna paint over that. have to really cake on the paint there and do many layers to hide the, the pencil marks that are underneath and this blue over here and then I'm gonna go ahead and cake some more paint on so I can get that fur look of those lines but it will take a little bit longer to dry but I still feel that even though I'm using the smaller brush I still should have had those lines going okay it's looking great feel like I moved it around quite a bit. Let's go ahead and add some neon green. I'm going to dump out my, well, you know what, we're going to go to a darker color. So, now neon green's pretty light. I'm going to dump out my water and I'm going to put a little bit more clean water. There we go. Put these back in there and give them an extra little bit of a wash. Yeah, really clean those up. The reason why that I'm not putting all my paint down on the canvas all at once is because I feel that when I do that, um, the paint dries a lot faster because I'm using acrylic and I kind of want my paint to be uh, pliable and wet throughout the whole um, throughout the whole process so if I do a little at a time it kind of stays moist longer oh beautiful green up against yellow, I feel that it does very organic, natural look, and it's just very pleasing to the eye.
った。Don't fuss with it too much. Just let it happen as it happens. If that's how it happens, that's how it happens. Let it be. Should we add green? I'm liking it. Okay, so what else can we do? Now, with me doing these yellows and greens on this side, basically what I'm saying is the light, it's going to be dark everywhere, but the light is coming in this direction. Therefore, this direction is going to be opposite the light. So, we're doing this. The light is this way and dark is this way. So I want these ones to be a little bit darker. So let's work on that for a second to give this area over here time to dry. We already did blues. Let's add a little bit of blacks in here. Don't forget, every so often, if you need to, lift up your canvas and paint the little edges so that way you already have the paint in your brush. Why not? A little bit at a time. Now, if your painting at this point isn't looking exactly like mine, that's awesome. That is a good thing. You don't want it to look like a car carbon copy of mine. You want it to look like it's your painting. And that's what I want. I want it to be your pain. I want to know who you are and how you feel and how you see the world solely based on looking at the painting that you paint. And if you make your painting look completely exactly exactly every little last brush stroke just like me, I'm not going to get to know who you are through your art. 
Now there is something to be said that the way I learned how to paint was watching and spending time and a lot of hours seeing how others that came before me, how they moved their brush across the canvas and what they did in their techniques. And yeah, I do that. But make this wolf look like your wolf. If you were a wolf, what would you look like? This is what I would look like. What would you look like? Let that be for a second. I'm going to switch brushes to my little one. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the nose just a little bit because I feel like everywhere has a little bit of wet painting paint and I really kind of want to just let it give it time to dry. So, we're going to want a mouth. And then we're going to want to know. All I'm doing is color blocking because I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a shadow. So all these movements that I'm making now are just outlining these, this area. And then now that I have the outline, I'm going to fill in the outline. If it's too stressful for you, just make a circle. Circles are awesome. Now do you see how I left myself some negative space here where I can add more colors? That was on purpose. Well, I have the black. I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes. By sticking with the same color and trying to do those areas with the same color, you're kind of saving on your water just a little bit. I can hear the neighbors down over here a little bit playing. Sounds like their horse playing. These are not dry yet. I want to touch it up, but it's not dry. I'm going to wait till it's all the way dry before I go touch up these edges and make them crisp. I'm going to add a little bit more. You having fun? I know I am. I'm totally feeling like I'm at peace right now.
thinking, let's add some red. What do you think about some red? Because we got the primary colors. Red, we got blue and yellow, and then we have some tri-dairy colors. So if I add red, that's the three primaries. One thing I forgot to bring out here with me. Oh, I hear a helicopter. The one thing I forgot to bring out here with me is the color wheel. I wish I had the color wheel. Um, let's see, okay. Yeah, let's do some red. I'm gonna put it over here with the pink, next to the pink. I'm gonna use my bigger brush for this one. Let's go ahead and turn this over so we can, oh, I already did. Let's get a new one. I have a new little paper towel over here. Should not have done that. There we go, my little furry. Where else could we add some beautiful red? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Like that, that looks good. <sighs> decisions, decisions, decisions. I feel like we should put some here just because. Now I'm starting to feel like maybe a little bit of orange would be cool. Because we got purple.
I'm gonna go ahead and get some orange and put it right next to the red which really should have put more I should have put this over here more to the yellow it really doesn't matter as long as it's on the palette I just feel that you know if you're gonna be mixing colors and stuff that it's easy to have them next to each other it's much more easier to do that turn this for a second. Give myself a different way to look at it. If you haven't turned your painting in a while, go ahead and turn it. Just so you can see it in a different way. Maybe it'll give you some really cool, awesome ideas. I'm totally super super excited to see your painting. I really am. I wonder if it's going to be totally uniquely you or if it's going to be a carbon copy of mine. Which is totally cool. You know, if it is a carbon copy. But I want to see your voice. Why did I do that? I need more orange. And I just totally did that. Remember when I just only did the one yellow there? Okay, and then we'll like, wait a minute. No, not okay. So orange is not covering up those pencil marks that well. It's coming together along really nicely. Sometimes it's okay to glob on the paint a little bit, especially if your paint is very thin and it's showing the colors from underneath and you don't want that to happen. Sometimes you do want to be able to show the colors underneath and that's totally cool too. Cheaper paints tend to have more water in them and more expensive paints tend to be a little bit thicker and have more pigment. That's why they're more expensive because there's more expensive stuff in them. And use that to your advantage. If you want your paint to be thin, buy the cheap stuff. If you want your paint to be thick, buy the expensive stuff. 
if you buy the expensive stuff, oftentimes you don't, if you need your paint to be a little thicker, you don't really have to add gesso because you already bought the thick, expensive paint. So you're kind of just letting it be and do what it is. Gesso can get quite expensive. Gesso is a product that you add to your paint to thicken it. And I typically don't ever really need it because of, I don't know, my style. My voice. We just don't really, it's not my thing. Which, but it is cool though. I do enjoy paintings that are raised. Um, it's just that I feel like it makes a whole huge mess, you know? Like, I'd rather to just buy thick paint and just be done with it than having to mix up a whole bunch of different little mini batches and then I end up throwing a lot of paint away at the end of the painting. So it's me being cheap. That's really what that's all about. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm loving it. Let's see. What if we add just a little bit more purple? Because I was really digging the purple. And then we didn't add a whole lot of it, and now it's like it seems to have faded away. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more purple here. Now my water is very dark, and that's okay because purple is a dark hue. A motorcycle. So purple is a really dark hue, so it's kind of okay that I have dark water. I'm really honestly just kind of making it up where I'm putting the colors. I hope you're doing that too. Just kind of making it up and feeling like, well, I think I should put some there and I should think I should put some there. Because that's what's going to make it really cool is your own unique perspective on how you're using your color palette. I am trying to focus with shadowy, darker colors here and brighter colors. I did, I moved some orange because it's kind of coming down on him, but mostly this is just all going to be dark colors. Let me go ahead, before I do that, let me go ahead and do the sides here. And notice it all the times where I'm putting the color, I'm trying to do it so that it's very sporadic and it's not like all blue like I'm trying to really like purple blue black red so it's a little bit everywhere I really want a diversity of colors the more diverse you make it with colors the more it's really gonna start looking like fur and it's gonna have it's gonna be more visually appealing and interesting because you have all you it's busy and the yeah the busier you make it the more it's really gonna pop and look like awesomeness but what we're going for we should have painted the side first I like it. 
That's the happening. This is so much fun. Oops, that orange is a little wet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glove the paint on and then kind of wipe it off. Then I can just be normal over here and let it happen. Let your painting happen. If you got a boo-boo, let it be. And if you don't like the boo-boo and you decide no, let it completely dry all the way 100% and then when it's dry, then go back over it to fix it. Because if you keep trying to fix it while the paint is still wet, you're going to be wiping, putting on paint and wiping it back off with the brush at the same swoop. And it's, you're going to get nowhere. And it's just going to be a big blob. And in the art world, they term that uh, mud. When the colors just mix together and there's not really dynamics and it, it kind of looks like mud. So we don't want that. Especially when you've got orange involved in, as one of the colors. Now you can do this exact same painting and use wolf colors. That's totally cool. I've painted this using it going with browns, like varying tones. And then I've done it with grays. You know, you add a little gray in there. I challenge you to paint this painting, have a good time with it, and then keep the video or just, you know, remember how it's done. And then in a year from now, I want you to paint this again. After you've taken classes, more classes, and after you've practiced, you've studied, you've looked, and experienced a little bit I want you to come back and do this and I want you to see if your art skill has changed it's gotten worse stayed the same oftentimes you're gonna find that it improves if you paint this again in a year from now and you don't have any more improvement and you kind of come up with the same thing again then I would say that that's kind of an example of you telling yourself that you need to practice a little more, study a little more. Um, it's almost a way to check your progress. There are a couple of failures and things that I've painted along the way that I'm totally embarrassed that I painted. But then I go paint them again and then it's total triumph. I just needed to take more classes, I needed to practice more, I needed to read more, I needed to stare at the world a little bit longer. Staring at the world's a good idea. If you ever have the opportunity to see a wolf, like live, you know, to actually just see it, like the zoo or the anywhere you happen to be, take a moment and just sit there and stare at it and be present in that moment and look the, sh the shape and the outline and the colors that you see in the fur because they're not all just one color if you really get up on a, a wolf there there's a lot, a lot of different fur going on there tons of different wolf furs I do that with like clouds and stuff because I have been painting now for like a little over 15 years where I've been serious with it and I still feel that I have not mastered the, the clouds yet. And people love my paintings and think they're just awesome and they're great. And in the back of my head, I'm like, no, it's not. Like, I just totally don't like how I do clouds. And I keep practicing and trying. And I can see the difference. I'm totally getting better at clouds. I'm so much better now than I was last year and the year before. So I do keep some of my failures. Like I always said, 70% of the art that you make is going to be hideous. But you need to go through that 70% to be able to get to that 30% of awesome. And I still have those days. I do. I am in the process of painting a, a mermaid. And... Uh, She's cute. The water is horrible. Water totally sucks. 
So I'm letting her dry right now, giving myself a break, and then I'm going to revisit. But in the meantime, I watched the movie The Little Mermaid. I've watched um, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I've been taking a moment. I um, I've been looking at the female form a little bit to try to not is a weird, creepy way, but is a way of how like I, I look and I see what why. why is my painting hideous? Like, what am I doing? Is my the anatomy not correct? Is like, the, are the arms too long? Like, I'm just studying and just taking a moment to be present, to be there, and then I'll go back to it with a fresh attitude. And then when I do that, the goal is that I'm like, oh, there it is. That was the problem, and then I'll know how to fix it. So if you feel like you need to do that with this piece, go ahead and do that. Just stop. Take a break. Try not to take too long of a break. I mean, I do kind of make a rule for myself that once I start a painting, I don't like starting a new one until that painting's finished. It is very rare that I just stop. This is, I haven't just stopped and started a new painting in I would say about two years this is the first time that I'm like, I have to take a break completely um, with the piece. And you know, there are times where I just throw out the canvas or um, if it's not a dark, like this is a really dark canvas. So if I had, if I wanted to reuse this canvas and paint something else on it, what I would do is I would completely allow the whole thing to dry, as dry as I can get it. And then I will go over it most likely with the color black. And then I'll have a painting over it that is cool, that would work with the color back as a background. Because um, also, you know, like these yellows, you got to really cake that on like you can see there with the black to get the coat. Um, so I'd probably stay in darker colors. Um, now, if I had painted this with a lot of pastels, oops, I don't want purple. If I painted this with a lot of pastels and light colors, then and I decided I didn't want it, then what I would do was let it dry completely and then I would just paint over it with white and I'd probably give it like several coats and let it dry thoroughly between coats and then you have a new canvas. Typically though I don't really, I used to do that when I was a poor college student but um, the price of canvas has gone down significantly in the past 10 years, of, like a lot. <laughs> So I kind of don't need to do that. And like, I don't want to produce garbage for the world, right? Like, if I want to hang it on my wall, then why would I expect somebody else to do it? To hang it on their wall? Which is very odd because, you know, it's happened to me a couple times where I hated one of my pieces and then somebody is in love with it and thinks it's the best painting I ever painted. That's a thing. That like totally happens to me every once in a while. Um, I, if I have a rule that if like a canvas goes to I oftentimes I found more success selling my art at um, craft fairs than I do selling them at galleries I think a lot of it is strength in numbers craft fairs tend to bring out more people um, I also like having the it's I'm a business lady I like having control over my money uh, I can't really do that when it's at a gallery. They take a percentage and then how do I know that the gallery is going to charge the customer the correct amount and what if they pocket like 50, 80 percent of the sale tell me they sold it for 50 bucks when reality is they sold it for two grand. I don't trust people. So craft fairs tend to be where it's at for me. Um, now when I go to craft fairs I'm talking about like the really big ones in the US. So we're getting like huge, huge crowds. And then I'll go in with like three, four, maybe 500 canvases of paintings. So when I do my fairs, if I go three times and that painting has not sold and a lot of people have seen it, then usually those ones get deemed as to paint over. Um, as a hobby, I spray paint on the side and usually a lot of times those paintings tend to get spray painted over. 
the, the acrylic get spray painted over. And then I'll do like graffiti art on it. Oh, this is looking really great. I love it. Just she's coming alive. I don't know what to do with this little spot. I want to do something cool. So I thought there's blue here. We got purple. We got black. We did red. Could go with a little bit of orange. We could go with some yellow. But the yellow is more like a highlighty color, and so is the green. So how about we go with a little bit of an orange? Of course, if we go with a little bit of orange, what's going to happen is we're going to bring kind of some highlight. But we do have it there in the shadowy area. Let's go orange. Now, to be cheaper, I do find that if you buy just the primary colors, the basics, then you can mix the colors you need, which is totally cool. And I mix a lot on my, especially when I'm doing realism and for paintings that are supposed to look like they came from a camera, I mix tons. But to save money if you're doing this type of art, modern art, uh, it, mixing is great. But like, really, honestly, just buy the orange you know so that way you're saving time and effort to have to go and mix all this colors you just have the tubes <laughs> be good to yourself and buy a tube spend an extra couple little couple extra bucks now also too that's if you're gonna if you're planning on painting a lot if you're not really gonna like if this is a one and done type of deal maybe you don't want to do that maybe it would be better to not spend so much and then just mix. Now when you're mixing you got to put more effort into it and thinking and making sure that like that you're mixing it right and it's coming out the colors you want. That's a whole thing right there too. That's a whole science. I wrote it I wrote a whole entire uh, it was a 62 page book about that topic. It's on my website. Go check it out. I put a lot of effort into that book just talking about theory and science and everything. Okay, so I'm liking it. She's coming along really beautifully. I feel like we should work on them eyes. But I kind of want to do the eyes last. Um, let's see. What color, what color, what color? Well, then I, I did add orange. Let's do some red right here. That would be great. A little pop of color. Da, 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 da. Yes. Uh. So I've been having a hard time lately because you know, I've painted quite a lot of different things and I'm a little bit in a slump here about ideas for what I want to paint next. So could you let me know, like send me an email. I'm on Facebook a lot. It's a good way to get a hold of me. Facebook Messenger, um, Instagram, whatever you got. I've been using Twitter, but Twitter doesn't seem to be that popular nowadays with if you're not like in government. So um, send me a message and give me some ideas of like things that you want to want me to show you how to paint like landscapes or like be specific too. like put some actual detail into it don't just tell me rose so I'm like okay rose but actually no like rose and like yeah you know, or you know just go into detail with something cool like a specific flower that's like oh okay I haven't painted one of those in a while My goal is to paint one painting a day. But I can do that because this is my profession. If this wasn't my profession and I had like a desk job, 
I don't really think that's something that I could accomplish that would be a me thing. Uh, but since it is my job, I'm cool with it. I'm going to dump out my water really quick and get some new fresher water. Just because, why not? I recommend you do the same. It's good to have clean water every now and then. I'm going to put these in here. This is why some people, and I do it too, I really do. Um, I was kind of a little lazy today, but like, uh, there are some theories that say that you're supposed to start with the light colors first and then work your way to the darker colors. That's so you can save your water and you can your water will get darker as you go. And then uh, also this idea that the yellows, like when it goes over, the light colors go over a dark color, you can't see it as well. Um, like this was totally cool. I was digging this pink here, but then I went with the purple and I kind of killed what was going on with that pink, you know? So it's the whole overlapping of the overlapping. So really, technically, if I wanted this video to go like six hours, it would have been best if I painted all these first, let them dry, and then like paint it here, let it dry, then paint there, let it dry, then paint there, let it dry, and then you get what I'm saying? So it kind of goes into itself so that the head is the last thing. That way it's overlapping the colors and like what happened with this pink, I could still have those lines overlapping, which is something I might do later. But if you do overlapping, like if I go with another layer of blue here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna hide all of my little brush strokes. And I really want my brush strokes to be showing a lot. So I'm not gonna go back over it. I'm just gonna let it be, and it is what it is, and that's just how it is. Painting is a really good activity to work on to gain in patience and to let the world be, just let it happen. That's why I like art when they do the emotional therapy and stuff. That's why art is so good because it gets you to calm down. It gets you to like not stress for a minute. And sometimes it does get you to stress a little bit, but we're trying to make fun art right now. I'm not trying to put this at the loop. Like if I die, I'm not trying to paint like this is going to be what I'm remembered for. I'm trying to paint because I like it. It makes me happy. And then it would be cool if I'm remembered for it, but like I've painted so many. I want to be known for, I made people feel good. I made them have a good day. I, my, I, because I was in the world, their life was a little bit easier. You know? I want to be remembered for that. I'm a Christian. And, you know, it was cool to be like, you know, like Plato's, the books he wrote and the things he did. But, like, this isn't my magnus opus here. This is my fun time to hang out with you. We're having a great time together. And by having that attitude, I will have a magnus opus happen at some point. Could be this one. Could be another one. I'll never know till I'm dead. To see what was the greatest painting I ever painted but I am trying as hard as I can to do the best I can see what I mean about overlapping you let this one dry then you and then if we let that one dry and then we get the green then you really get those those spiky points in there okay let's see where else Ear, 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 what should we do with you? How would you be awesome and so cool? So anyways, having that mindset of what's going on with not having your magnus opus, it will happen naturally when it happens and it's going to be a happy accident. 
that's the whole trick of it. So it's kind of like a mind tease. Because otherwise, I'm going to be stressing the whole time. And if I'm stressing the whole time, it's going to show in my work. And nobody's going to think that your stressing piece is your magnum sofas, right? So the trick is you get it by not getting it. Hmm. Can't just cover everything, blue. And then there was blue. And there was blue everywhere. Just a whole lot of blue. Why? Because she liked the color blue and it was a good color. And blue made her happy. ideas. Happy accidents. It came out awesome. Total awesome. Okay, I need a break for a second. Oh, down to the final final and I don't know what I want to do. Wash my brush really good. Remember to keep washing your brushes every so often. I think I'm washing my brush pretty much every time I change color, obviously. But I'm also washing my brush, like, I would say when I don't change color, like every two chunks of different color that I'm doing, I'm changing. I'm, like, so if I do, like, a section of purple and then another section, I wash my brush and then another section of purple. So I'm keeping it clean, keeping it together, keeping it working. There we go. I like that. Full cool highlight right there. She doesn't have any dark circles because she's awesome. Mm. You know what we could do? We could add a tad bit of white in here. I mean, super highlighty, right? Yeah. Why don't we add some white? We gotta let everything else dry though. I just don't know. I need a little green here. So this is supposed to be the shiny part of the nose. So the nose is going to be a little glistening. Okay, so I'm going to put the green there. I'm going to go back over and fix that when I'm done. But it's the shiny part of the nose. How about we work on the eyes? Because I'm all stressed out where to put everything else. I'm going to go and let's see what color. Let's do like a light brown. But not a skin tone brown. Just a little bit. I don't need a whole lot. And we're going to use our tiny little brush. When it comes to doing eyes, I always prefer to use the tiny little skinny brushes. I never use a big brush. Unless I'm just... Doo! Then, yeah, I guess you could. But then you'd want to make sure that your big brush is a nice pretty point and put effort into that. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I was thinking, what am I going to call her? I think that she would be a really cute bow. You know, like rainbow. She's a she-wolf in disguise. Coming out, coming out, coming out. Da 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 Yep. Yuppers. I love it. Hey, pretty little bow. How are you doing? I see you. Oh, ooh! Okay, I won't talk to you. I feel like as long as you can get the eyes to go, it really, everything else will feel that much cooler. You just gotta get them eyes. Too much paint. Can overlap a little bit because it's top of the mouth. Maybe I need more. Do we need more? Da 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 <laughs> She's a she wolf in the closet Coming out, coming out, coming out Da 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 Decisions, 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 lady. Where do you want me to put the makeup on next? I mean, honestly, we're really quite close because we're just covering our, up the white. So the more that we cover up the white, the closer we get to the end of the painting. I mean, yeah, duh, right? Um, but sometimes... Like if you're doing a landscape, you're gonna go over and you're gonna go over and you're overlapping and the, even though you put a lot of paint on the canvas, you're still gonna overlap it. Oh. 
that's what was missing. She's a she-wolf in disguise. She's a she-wolf in disguise. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, well, everything's wet where I want to paint now. It's all wet. I'm thinking more purple. Yeah. More and more and more purple. Okay, here's what, what I'm going to plan to do. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Keep painting. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this area dry. I'm gonna go back over, I'm thinking purples. But while that's drying, I'm gonna go around the edges and I'm gonna go with my little tiny brush here and just try to sharpen up all of the edges. Oh, I need some more paint. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. Tiny, tiny little bit of paint. Okay, I'm going to turn it just because. Maybe we'll angle it for a second here. Mm -mm, I don't know what to do with that. I can hear there's a neighbor lighting off fireworks and the sun isn't even set yet. Kind of feels like a waste of money a little bit. Still bright out here. I really feel like this little outlining here. I feel as though I'm really, it's really cleaning everything up and nicely, isn't it? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? There is that better. Oh, geez, a lot of yellow there, a lot of wet yellow. There we go, that works. That works. Turn it around. Yeah, I do want to say something. Painting outside because I don't have my hair dryer. 
it actually it's it's working all right it's about 80 degrees today it's a little warm I'm in the shade here um, sun's going down now it's very cool but like it's paint that it's allowing the dry, the paint to dry rather quickly and I'm kind of liking that yeah I'm gonna let that be yep there it is there we go loving it so fix that nose a little bit there actually it was the mouth <laughs> yep, loving it. Dun, 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 da -da. I'm loving it. Turn the canvas and do this. I feel like there's some white here that could really get covered up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. I really love purple. Purple's my favorite color. Sure, you've noticed that it's on the logo on my logo of everything. Purple. Should we add purple? I'm thinking no because we still want to have a shot a highlight. We could add a little bit, but I don't think we'd really want to overdo it. Dun, da, dun. Oh, 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 oh. 
-hmm. Do you hear the birdies? Kind of above my head and off to the side, about 10 yards, there's a, um, there are doves and they're making a nest. I think we should have uh, babies any day now. They've been at it for a little while here. I think I noticed them about a week ago, starting to make their nest. But I don't think the babies have come yet, so I don't hear any little ch uh, chirbies. And I see the mommies, the mommy and daddy going many times. So I'm not sure if the babies are yet, but they're coming. Oh, jeez. Stress and pressure! Too much stress and pressure! Ugh. Honestly, I don't know. I just don't know. Gonna go with my little guy? Just cut. I'm gonna do the notes. Ah! Oh, I like that. Yep, -er. That was a good one. Da 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 dum. Da 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 dum. Do 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 do. Okay. Let's trade back to the big one here. Get all that paint off of it, even though it had purple on it. I'm still just gonna clean my brush, have a nice pretty point. As much as I can have a point with a square brush. That red's still kind of wet. If you're having a hard time, use a hairdresser and dry the painting thoroughly, then continue. Because I'm right now trying not to mix paint on the canvas. Now you can if you want. I do feel that if you do that, it possibly could not end up so abstract and it start looking into realism and it's a whole to do and and sometimes we do get two toned which is pretty much almost always actually that we get two tones for when we do um sorry I just thinking there for a second when when uh two tones are in fur like I have a kitty and I've checked out her fur and she, she's, she's black, but yet she's got like this white undercoat underneath. That happens a lot in animals. But I'm trying to do modern painting here. I want my, I want this painting to look modern. Modern art, abstract art, hyper realism. Hyperrealism is when you take an object that, like this, a wolf, we know it's a wolf, we can see that it's a wolf for the dimensions, but hyper as in where 
exaggerating the features and we're hypering the colors. I'm going to wash my brush, dry it really well, go fast, and I'm going to lift up some of this purple paint while it's still wet, wipe it off, do it again. Notice how I don't have any water in my brush when I did that. That's how you're able to erase with paint when you get those boo-boos. It only works if the surface underneath is super dry and you're, you're, uh, you go fast and you don't wipe like a whole lot because then like how we had earlier here, we had some black kind of pull off a little bit. Let's see if I have another little, uh, another one of these. I usually don't use three. It's really because I'm going back and forth with so many colors so much. That's why I'm doing it. How about we add some white? Wouldn't that be cool? A little bit of white. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take this off so I'm running out of space, but I think I'm going to have this. Oh, I need. No, we're going to keep this on right there. Ugh. No, a little bit of white. Don't need a lot. And you see how much paint I have left over? I'm really not wasting the paint on this one. I'm just going a little bit and a little bit. There's no need to go squirt a huge mess on your palette. Just squirt out what you need. And that's totally a rookie mistake that I've seen with my students that are beginning when they go and squirt their paint out. They squirt out a whole glob. If you did, that's okay. But, you know, try to conserve a little bit so you can save your money and... And that way you don't end up with a big mess. I mean, I do find that if you use one palette for a painting, all your thoughts are together with the colors. And so it's easier to maneuver, to see it all in one glance, all the different shades that you've got going on. But if you glob a lot of paint and you have a lot of excess on there, then you're going to be using like three or four or five plates, and that would be annoying, right? Using five different plates to go back and forth and... It's like, it makes you think more about, oh, where's that, that shade of pink that I wanted? And I'd rather keep all the shades of pink together. I feel like I should have painted this white first and then gone over it with all these colors because now I'm like, ah! I'm gonna have to go back over that nose again but for now I'm just gonna wipe some white and I'll touch up that nose when it dries otherwise if I touch it up while the paint is still wet it's gonna create grays and I really don't want gray mm, I like it I'm gonna go ahead and turn my canvas just to make it a little bit easier for myself <clears throat> Make sure that it's still in, in view of the camera. Glob it a little bit right there so it can really stand out and cover that green. Stress and pressure. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Because I don't know why I can feel it. 
Hmm. Paint that white right now, but I'm going to probably come back and fix that. You know, I really feel that adding the white really gives it a interesting look. Gives it more dynamics. <sighs> really puts a highlight on the face. Um, now, you don't need to paint the white because the canvas is white underneath, but I feel that it kind of protects those areas of the canvas uh, over the course of the years, especially when you have it in an environment where somebody is smoking or there is humidity because um, with smoke, the white areas tend to turn a little bit yellow when, it's, uh, when there's a bunch of smoke over the years hmm. so this white just helps the canvas stay a little bit whiter you could if you are a smoker if this is going to be in a smoky area I would recommend probably doing a top coat on your painting um, I do top coat on my paintings quite often actually almost all of them all the ones that I love I do top coats on uh, they last longer Especially if you put it in like a bathroom or something uh, you'll notice if it goes uh, if anything happens like you're in a bathroom what happens is the back side right here is gonna start turning purple and green and then it'll also turn a little bit yellow with the smoke and then like the shallows will go a little bit orange the darker colors they won't change that much and it depends on the quality of paint you're using too the better quality of paint, the more longevity you're going to have out of it, and it's going to last. Um, also on the websites, a large majority of the websites will tell you too with the paint that you're buying. They'll tell you about their paint, and they have they've done stress tests on their paint and stuff, and they can tell you around about how long it would be good for, like how the, they would fade over time, the colors. But I'm painting for the here and now. So that's what I'm interested in. The here and the now. I'm going to go over here and try to see if I can give a little bit extra, a little globby globbiness of that red. See if I can get it to stand out just a little bit. And blend it back in so you can hardly see it but maybe it stands out a little bit on that black this is great I love it it's beautiful I'm gonna do one last little thing just to make those eyes pop a little extra I'm gonna wait for this nose area to dry for a second but what I'm gonna do and I really think this is I mean you don't have to do this if you don't want to but I really feel that this really helps be like let me know that this is an eye is by doing a little bit of eyeliner. Not a lot. Just a little bit underneath. And you see how that really just makes the color pop? Let's do a little bit on the other eye. Just to let it pop. Try to make sure that you get a really nice and straight curvy line that's just fluid throughout. See? It's just so much nicer. We could do a little bit on the top. 
feel like this needs a little bit right here. You could do eyeliner on the top, but now that I'm looking at it, it's going to look too much like makeup. So I'm going to let the fur be the eyeliner. Oh, got a little gray going on. I'm going to go ahead and touch up this little pupil over here just a little bit. Perfect. I like it. Let's see, what else? What else? Yeah, I'm thinking the nose, and I think I'm going to call it a day. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, so let's try to... Let's try to make this nose a little bit more nosy. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Help me out. Now, the white isn't all the way dry, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to continue. I strongly would recommend letting... Oh, ah! See? That's why. That is totally why you should let it dry. Ah! Again, again, again. Now I'm just scared that I don't want to do this. I keep having boobas. It's okay, it's okay. That's okay, we're gonna fix it. Actually, that might be a happy accident. Oh, what, 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 what? what? Let's work on this little area. Okay, I like it. So now what I'm going to do is I want the nose to be like different than the mouth and I want to be able to see that. Wash my brush really super good because it had black on it and I'm going to go back in with some white. But again, let it dry but for the sake of the video I'm just going to go ahead and for go forward with this. Nice pretty little point. Only filling up my brush with half. Do you see this? There's, I'm not only filling, when I fill my brush up, look at that, I'm not totally filling it to um, the well. I'm only filling it, doing half of the, br of the bristles. That's kind of a thing. Okay, so now the ridge of where the mouth would be, there's going to be a little line. Try to get it in one pass if I can. There. So now what I'm saying is there's a mouth. Do you see the mouth? I see the mouth. Okay, so I'm going to fix, touch up this white just a little bit. Since it is the lightest of the colors, it might take a few coats to really get in there to cover what it needs to cover. If you don't have time and you just don't want to, just glob on the paint really thick. Be very careful that you only glob it where you want the paint to go. And it'll take longer to dry, but you know, you let it sit. It'll dry, but like versus dry, sit, wait, dry, paint, dry, paint, dry, just glob it on. That's a quickie quicker tin way to go about it. Especially if you're using not so expensive paint like this paint, I know what's going to happen is it's going to dry flat.
because of the type of paint that I have. I know, I know, I know. Now that I see it from a distance, I added this little green white thing. I don't think I should have done that. So we're gonna extend the mouth a little bit. We're gonna make it kind of like it's whiskery. And we're gonna extend the whiskers down just a little bit. Let me see it upside down. See it sideways. See it the other side. Okay, I see what I see what I'm doing that I don't like. I really would prefer this to be more black, and yet I put white. If I wouldn't have gone too much with the white because it's shadows, right? We want to still say that this is the highlighty end and this is the darker end. So I'm going to kind of get rid of some of this white, which it will turn a little bit gray. Wipe some of that white off. And just apply some more black. Gray tones, gray tones, they're the gray tones. Nope, don't like that either. Maybe if we let it go orange, how about that? Okay. Of course, orange is not really doing a good job either. Because it's not really disguising. Or we just make the mouth a little bit bigger. How about that? Make the mouth bigger than we had it. Oh, I feel like I totally just messed this painting up right now. So close and so far. Well, it just kind of looks like her mouth is open then. I'm just really wiping off the white. Then I'm going to go back in and put some black and cover that all up. With the black, see how I'm covering the gray? Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Whatever shall we do? Wash the brush, go back in with some white again, and just like before, add the white. Whew, 
I'm tired and fatigued and that's what's going on right now. I'm too tired for this. It's okay to fuss with things sometimes, just at some point you gotta know when to stop and I think I'm close to that stop part because this is what happens. You start messing with things and messing with it, especially when the paint's wet. All you're doing is just moving paint around and creating mud and I'm trying really careful not to do that, that's why I pulled some of the paint off. I just made a Ricky mistake. And it all started because of this little area that I brought everything down, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have just went back over with some blue and got rid of that white that I had added. And I would have saved this whole problem to begin with. So when you start making dumb, stupid little mistakes, stop, take a break. And if you're really close to your painting, sometimes it's cool to just say, hey, the painting's half finished. And that's like cool. The Mona Lisa never got finished. He passed away. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci passed away before he declared it finished. So just let it be. Just gonna add a little bit more green in there. And really, honestly, maybe the nose did, the mouth did need to come down just a little bit. And I could probably make that a little bit bigger, that white line. I just want to make sure the dimensions are good because with this style of painting, if the dimensions are good and they make sense, then your painting is going to be cool and it's just going to work and people are going to know what you're painting. I have some lines here that I'm going to go ahead and take some yellow and cover up. So do you see what I'm doing here now that I'm at the end of my painting? I'm going around and finding little areas that I'm like, oh, it's not good. And I'm just going to like glob this paint on right here. Glob it, globby, globberton. I always do that. I take the last 10 minutes or so. Usually when I have my hair dryer, every time I'm drying it, I'm staring at it and looking what could fi be fixed. There, I globbed that on quite thickly. I like it. It's working. Yeah? I think I'm going to say well, a little bit done. I'm going to make this a little bit flatter down here. So it gets kind of thicker. So it's a skinny point and then it gets thicker and thicker as it comes out a little bit. And there you have it. I am so super happy with it. I think, yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. This was so much fun, wasn't it? I really enjoyed painting this painting with you today. I just love it. It came out super awesome. Please, if you're feeling brave, you don't have to if you don't want to, but can I see a copy of your painting just to check it out and see how awesome of an artist you are? Please email it to me or hashtag and tag me in the post so that way I can see it. Let's light up social media. I know I am. I will see you on the next fun party.